So um, I want to thank, first of all, our sponsors for the Mid-Atlantic Women in Agriculture. We have our Departments of Ag at Delaware and Maryland, the USDA, all of our wonderful cooperative extension uh, organizations below right. Uh, we couldn't do it without them. It takes a village. We have some wonderful gold and silver level sponsors. And the entire menu of the Women in Agricultural websites are quite diverse. Um, and there is an archive, which you can see below, um, for um, all of the webinars that we have produced. Um, and so today we're going to be doing understanding um, live streaming for advocating or advocating as it's known and direct marketing of your agricultural business and with that we're going to move along and we're going to go let's go live uh, we're going to do a, a similar presentation at the women in agricultural conference on february 9th in dover delaware um, this information i'm going to bring all of the tools and equipment that i'll show you today uh, with me, we're going to hopefully um, get a lot of uh, hands-on use and practicing it. Uh, hopefully people will sign up and want to do some live streaming of their sessions and then we can take a look at it all. But I'm a communication specialist at the University of Delaware. My background is in journalism. So I am not, um, as, I, as Bob Hope would say, I am not a, uh, I have the face for radio. Uh, I have the face for um, writing. I don't particularly like to be on camera. I have no broadcasting chops per se, um, but nevertheless, um, I am also a social media strategist. Live streaming has become you know, a real thing and a very popular phenomena with social media. So I, I, I've jumped in, I've jumped in, I've made mistakes, still making mistakes. I am not a broadcasting professional as you will soon see. But um, this gives me uh, a chance to explore, which is becoming a really hot phenomenon in, in social media. And it's a way of another layer, another way of telling our story. So what we'll do today is go over some of the platforms and these are changing, they're coming in, they're failing, the new ones are coming in. It's a very fluid, uh, social media is very, very fluid. So, but there are some platforms that have risen to the top and have emerged as, as leading platforms. So we'll discuss those. Um, we'll discuss the equipment review, some broadcasting techniques, letting people know about your broadcast, how to advertise, how to market it, handling trolls, and also archiving. So live streaming, what is it? It is spontaneous. It is in the moment. It is generally on the scene. It is, it is for public audience. Uh, you're not restricting this to just friends. You're trying to communicate what you're doing, your profession, your agricultural, in this case, your agricultural business, related business, for, to promote a better understanding, maybe to promote your business for sales. That, that's all fine. Um, but it's mostly to promote understanding of who you are and what we do. Uh, we don't want to preach to a choir. We want new audiences. So that's why it's public. It's, uh, it is mobile for the most part, although Facebook Live is scheduled to move into a desktop platform. That's going to limit your mobility, but you'll be able to still do a live broadcast from your from your. Um, your PC or laptop, and you can archive your your live streams, or you or you can uh, not. And so you have choices of whether you you want it to disappear after 24 hours, which is normally what happens to them if you don't archive them. They're they're ephemeral. They're meant to be in the moment, and then they leave. Um, but you can archive them now. The demand was there to do that, and there's a host of reasons why you might want to save what you've what you've done and use it, repurpose it. You can choose to be on camera or off camera. I personally choose to be off camera. I'm a photographer as well. I like being behind the camera, looking at other things. That's my, that's my comfort zone. Other people just like to be on. And you could be the voice of, of, your, of your family, the voice of your business. So there's absolutely, whatever you're comfortable with is essentially the path to take here. As far as platforms are concerned, they've come and gone, but some have really emerged as the leading ones, and that would be Periscope. Periscope is a platform that is now owned by Twitter. Periscope and Meerkat came out together roughly the same time. 
uh, and work roughly the same way. Periscope seemed to be the one that, that most people were doing. Twitter took notice of it. Twitter bought Periscope. So now Twitter, Periscope can be used independently of Twitter, but it can be now used seamlessly together with Twitter. So if you have a Twitter account already, Periscope is a no brainer in my opinion. And Periscope and Meerkat, although it's still there, it's sort of like I'm dating myself here, but VHS and beta and Meerkat sort of going the beta way. Some people will disagree with that. You can also live stream on YouTube. Um, you need to have a, a mobile phone, Android or iPhone. And then there are decoder apps, which are free, that allow you to uh, work within uh, Google. It took me about a half an hour to set one up. We don't have time to discuss that today, but I just wanted you to know that you can use YouTube for live streaming. And then of course you have Snapchat and Instagram. Snapchat was again, a very ephemeral application. You take a picture, you have cute filters you can put on little puppy dog ears, things like that. Very, very popular with youth. Now you can do video. It, it stays there for a little bit and then it goes away. Instagram has come out to challenge that and they have what's called Instagram stories. I have an Instagram account, but I don't use Instagram stories, at least not yet. I'm trying to still perfect the Periscope and Facebook live streaming. But that option is available. And at the time I, uh, I'm broadcasting this, I don't believe they can be archived, but I, I could be wrong about that. So in comparing the two, there are some differences. You have what's called trolls, and we'll talk about those. But trolls are people who are seeking attention through outrageous comments, usually sometimes very vulgar, political. They just want to, they've got a captive audience and they go on and they say what they need to say. They can be a, be a pest. You can report them. On Facebook, it's less likely an issue because people have accounts and, and the accounts aren't as easily um, faked and people don't want to be reported. They don't want to be, have their accounts terminated. So they tend to be a little bit better. They may still have strong opinions, but they're not going to be vulgar or crude. Facebook will use a square format, regardless of how you hold your phone, portrait, or landscape. Uh, Facebook puts it in a square format. Instagram does the same thing, and so does Twitter. Now, on Periscope, you can shoot it like this, or you can shoot it like this. And first, it was all portrait orientation, which is the most natural for, for cell phone users. But a lot of people demanded to have the landscaping because if you are going to repurpose your video, if you're going to save it and maybe download it to your phone, you may want to use it in another video or you might want to put it on YouTube. The, the landscape format is the preferred format. Um, if you watch newscasts where they use cell phone video, they, they have this black bar on either side, so they have to fill it with something. So you know, our TV sets, our screens are all horizontal. So that's the ideal way for a filmmaker's point of view to have your video shot. But um, so even if you are filming in vertical or horizontal mode and through Periscope and you send it to Twitter, Twitter's gonna square it off anyway. Um, in my opinion, the quality is a little better on Periscope than it is on Facebook. All of these cameras now, most of them are shooting in 1080 high def video. This will not be the end result. You will not be getting 1080 um, quality. Uh, there's just no way they can process that and, and put it up quickly like that. So it is, it is degraded. It is, it is, um, not as crystal clear as HD. And that's on both of them. But I, I would give an edge to Periscope. Uh, Facebook, you'll have a narrowed audience. Um, if you're putting it through your personal Facebook account, it's going to notify your friends that you're going live. If you put it on your page, it's going to notify your fans that you've gone live. And those could be limited. You can with Facebook just like you can with a normal post, you can switch to um, from friends only to public and make that particular live broadcast public. 
Um, Periscope is a wider, more global audience. Um, people find you by how you describe, in both cases, they're going to find you by how you describe the video, how you set it up to begin with. In Periscope and Twitter, they're going to, the hashtags become more important and uh, you will appear on a map on Periscope. Um, someone had commented earlier, this is a re-recording, that um, it gives you a general idea of where you are. It doesn't give you a precise location. So for your own safety, um, somebody can't go, oh, she's at 23rd and Washington Street, and boom, and come get you. They won't be able to do that. But the, the having of the location um, is helpful because it tells people where you are. So equipment. So then we'll spend a little bit of time on this because this, this is what I found has been um, is something you need to know. The, the number one piece of equipment you must have or invest in, and we're talking anywhere from 10 to $15. I like the Jackery. This is like a lipstick size, a little longer. Um, this is fairly lightweight. It gives me 10 hours of, of iPhone 6S Plus is what I use. Um, charge my battery, give me 10 extra hours. When you are live streaming, your battery life is going to get sucked right out. It is very hard on the battery. It's, um, you can have a fully charged phone and you, you do some live streaming for an hour and your, your battery is going to be drained. So I like this because I can plug it into my phone turn it on, wrap this around a tripod or a monopod if I've got one, and it's not heavy, and it doesn't really interfere with my, my filming, but it gives me that extra power. So this, in, to my mind, is the number one, if you have to spend anything at all, buy yourself an external power uh, battery charger. You also want, and we'll look at some uh, examples, but you want to have a way of gripping it um, there's lots of different grips and poles and sticks out there. If you're holding it or someone's holding it, they can put it, you can mount it on a tripod, you can have somebody hold it. But if you're walking around and filming, you're going to get this jittery kind of bounce. So that's when some of the um, tools to, to make that easier come in. So First of all, let's talk about cell phone grips. Um, these are cell phone grips here, and they're shown, oops. These are cell phone grips, and they're spring-loaded, so your phone, now I have, again, I have a fairly large iPhone 6S Plus. It just snaps in like that, and it has a tripod mount, standard tripod mount on the top, on the bottom, rather, and you just screw that into your tripod or monopod. And uh, this particular one, Charger City, has a ball joint so that you can toggle the phone to be landscape or portrait and lock it into place. About $5. Um, here's another one. This is spring-loaded also. So it can stretch to, to meet a fairly large phone. Again, no problem with the 6S Plus. Uh, that would probably, a Samsung a Note would be also big. Um, this doesn't have the ball joint, so this is meant to go onto a, onto a tripod. I've got one here. So you have a tripod, and then the tripods themselves have the toggle that goes uh, to the side for, for portrait or landscape. Um, I, you, you, it's nice to have some type of a, of a lightweight grip, something that you can use on the go, and your choices then are either a selfie stick or a monopod. The Dulcia right here is the monopod that I have. It has, uh, it has a base at the bottom so that you can stick it into the ground and anchor it into the earth, which is really nice. It's very lightweight. It extends with these brackets when you open them up, and I'm showing it here on the on camera. Um, you've got three of those, so you, they, it runs almost maybe about four and a half feet tall. And it's very, very, very lightweight. This is the standard tripod mount, so you would mount your, your bracket uh, right on there and then put your, and put your cell phone in place. You can also buy, and that's this little device right here, a toggle so that if your cell phone mount 
doesn't have a ball joint to it and you're using a monopod, you want to have something that will enable you to tilt your phone um, horizontal or, or landscape or portrait rug. So this has a little ball joint that you loosen up and you can toggle it. So um, here we're looking at probably $15 for the monopod, another $15 for this ball joint. Um, that will enable, give your, give your phone, you would still need then on top of that, a very basic three or $4 cell phone mount. And then you have pretty much a stick that you can go. And you can use this as, as a selfie stick, but the reason I like the monopod is it gives you, um, you can use this with a regular camera. So if you have a DSLR or a point and shoot camera, you can use the monopod. The selfie stick, on the other hand, and I did not buy this. I got this at a um, social media course I took and they gave these away. And this allows me to do the portrait or the landscape mode like so, and it's telescoping and it's Bluetooth, so I can turn the recording on and off or snap a picture, but it's only for a cell phone. So this is very lightweight, but I can't put my DSLR on this, or if I had a Canon or a Nikon point and shoot, couldn't, couldn't use this. So of the two, this is maybe $15, a monopod's 15. So for an extra $15, they get all the, the this, this is also a spring-loaded, using the same type of spring load for your phone. Um, accommodates most cell phones. I don't know of any that it doesn't. So those are your choices for uh, general walking around. It's still not going to stop your ability for, the, for that jiggle or that motion. So there are some stabilizers. So what you see, um, you, this is a stabilizer grip here. This is $99 and uh, you balance your phone. It has an access to access. This is a newer, it's called N-E-E-W-E-R, and uh, it's motorized, so you balance your phone in here, and then when you're walking, it takes a lot of that jiggling and uh, motion jump jitteriness away from your, uh, from your broadcast, and it does it automatically with, through the motor, so it's $100 um, if you think you're going to be doing a lot of this, a lot of walking tours, uh, live streaming, then this might be something you want to get involved with. Uh, there's also something called a stable cam. This is uh, an ex expandable, oh, it has a counterweight, it has a gimbal. So you balance your phone, it comes with pretty easy instructions, but you hold it like this. So when you're walking, what's happening is this is preventing the, um, is counterbalancing the movement. And this is just a very easy and sturdy grip. So now I would record and do live streaming while I'm walking uh, using this. And it just takes a little bit of that jumpiness out of your final broadcast. So this is about $79. I will give you, um, they'll be posted on the website, a list of all of this equipment, the links to them on Amazon, um, and where you can buy them, and my, my opinion, and my opinion is completely subjective. Um, the other thing I just bought is this device here, and I'm really excited about it. I haven't gotten it yet, haven't reviewed it, but it's called the uh, Rode Video Mic Me. Uh, there's several different versions. This one is the passive one, which means it doesn't need any power. You just stick it into your phone and away you go. It, it takes uh, the, the microphone that's built into our smartphones is very wide. It receives sound from everywhere. This is a shotgun mic or a directional mic. So if you're interviewing someone outside, it's going to pull sound from what's directly in front of you or wherever you point that. Now, the bad thing about that I have found, because I am outside a lot, I am filming uh, extension people. This would be even for just video, regular video recording, not just 1080 recording, is I'll have an agent tell me how to get rid of bagworms and they're picking it off the tree or whatever, whatever it is that I'm filming. 
And if there's any kind of wind outside, what you get is this, you know, kind of sound. It's, it's, it ruins, in my opinion, the, um, the video quality because of the sound so bad. So what they recommend with this and what you're looking at right here, this little fuzzy ball here is called a dead cat. It's known as a dead cat in the industry. Um, you will see professional videographers using this or news recorders outside. Um, a lot of um, microphones come with a foam, a spongy foam cover, which is called a windshield. And that's great. It probably helps a little bit, but it's mostly ineffective for strong wind. But the dead cat, because of its uh, texture and the fact that there's all these fibers out there, is really the best way to reduce that wind shear sound, that, that hollow in and out sound, which can really ruin an otherwise fine broadcast. And so when it's all put together, it looks like that. You just plug it right into your phone. So this whole setup is $84 if you get it on Amazon. I just ordered one, so I'm anxious to try it. But I would say wind has been my biggest problem, so I'm very excited about this. And there's no other special software that just goes right into your phone, and that's it. You should plan ahead. Live streaming is dependent on um, a good cell phone signal. You need Wi-Fi and or cellu cellular, and you can make a turn in a different direction and lose your signal. And it happens. It happens, I would say, 50, at least 50% of the time that I've ever used it. Um, there's no way to predict when it's going to go out. It just stops. And you have to start all over. Um, your live stream goes continues, of course, what you've done, but you may be in the middle of a sentence and boom, out it goes. So one of the things that you should do is copy your introduction. So when you are setting this up, you have two or three lines in which you can describe what you're going to be broadcasting about. And then people look at that description, decide whether they want to join it or not. Um, my advice is to write that on a typing app of some sort. You can type it into an email and email it to yourself. Or if you have a, like iPhones have note, um, you could use uh, ever, ever, or evergreen. I think it is, um, type it in. And that way, if it goes out and you're outside, now you've got your outside, it's sunny. You can't see the screen very well. You have to type it all that back in again. It would be so much easier to just copy it off your note app and then repaste it so you can get back on the air within 30 seconds. If you've copied it and pasted it, I write it, copy it and paste it initially. It usually is sitting there in my um, clip and paste zone. And then if I go out, I can just hit paste and I'm back on again without having to do all that typing. So that's a really big tip that you should uh, take advantage of. Work with a partner if you can. Uh, if you plan on, especially if you plan on being uh, the host and you're the face of your broadcasts, you want to have, it's be nice if somebody was there holding the camera, pointing at you, panning when they need to pan. Otherwise you're stuck with using a tripod if, you, if you're going to be the star of your show. Um, the uh, host also, if you're using a tripod, it happened to me one time I was doing a broadcast and I put it up on, on, a, um, on a tripod and just filmed myself. And later I found that there were all these really trolly, nasty comments. And it wasn't directed at me personally. I could be anybody, famous, unfamous. These people, they're there, they just exist and they're gonna say what they're gonna say. And it made, the usability of that broadcast as far as archiving it, putting it on the web or doing something with it later, it ruined it. So a partner can notice something and block that person or delete that comment right away. It still appears, but you can get rid of it. Um, so um, you do want to tell your host if you are covering an event and you are going to be people that you want to talk to, let them know ahead of time. Don't ambush them. Um, if I was going to the Women in Ag conference in February, I am, and I will be live broadcasting then. I'm going to go up to Victoria, and I'm going to go to Shannon, I'm going to go to Tracy, and I might go to Stacy, and I might say, hey, listen, I'm going to um, be live broadcasting. Do you mind if 
at some point I might come up and put you on camera, would that be okay? And you're not surprising them, gives them a chance of possibly, I said, it'll just be, you know, maybe 30 seconds, just a quick question or something like that. So you want to do that if you can. You also, also want to ask your online friends to share and promote what you've done. We're all in this together. Women in Ag is all about um, empowering and, and educating each other and uh, advocating for agriculture. So if you've done a live broadcast about your dairy farm or how you make honey or the kind of grapes you grow for the wine that you produce or what ever it is a day in the life of your farm and you were to text me or direct message me on twitter and say hey michelle would you mind sharing this out i'm trying to trying to get established here um i'm gonna say, absolutely i'm gonna do that for you i mean i don't have a, i have 2500 followers on twitter but and you've only got 30 that's how we're gonna grow that's how we're gonna that's a networking that we can do so you do want to ask your friends um, I would ask Stacy in a heartbeat, hey, I'm going to be featuring, um, I'm going to be going out to a farm and we're going to be showing this harvest and she might be able to share that um, on or retweet it on social media. So um, you want to do that. You want to network because this is how we get established. And I, I'm a great believer in supporting each other and, and, and getting that done. A um, couple other essentials. This on the right, what you're seeing here is just an example of my typing in. Um, I did a tour of the Master Gardener demonstration garden this summer, and um, this was my actual description. It was a garden event, so I hashtagged it because people follow that. People who are into gardens follow that hashtag. I wanted my U De University of Delaware community to, to uh, be aware of it because it's a University of Delaware property. So I use that hashtag. I use net D because that's my catch all for the state. I use cooperative extension because it was an extension of that. But it was an open house. Hey, come check out our garden. Um, this would be what I would do on the bottom right is what I might do if I was going to the uh, Women in the Ag Conference and I was live tweeting then I might put something like that in, but I write it in my notes and then I just copy that, I put it on the screen when it's asked me for a description. Um, but the keywords and hashtags, it should be short enough, but, but also compelling. Um, what is this about? Somebody, you're, you're trying to reach new people now. Remember, you're trying to reach new people. So what is this about? Are they gonna be interested enough to, to stop what they're doing, to kind of, pop in and visit you. So um, the other thing you should do is try to turn off your notifications, your badges or screens. Sometimes when I get texts, they, they just pop up. Um, that's not gonna get broadcasted. It's only gonna broadcast what it's seeing through the camera, but you don't want that popping up. Mine really linger on my phone and then I can't see what I'm doing or I can't see what somebody's saying. So you wanna disable your notifications when you're doing a live broadcast. Now, Periscope. Let's look at Periscope. This is uh, recently, I just created the Mid-Atlantic Women in Ag account, so it only has one follower right now. We're following six people, but this is a standalone. This is an app that you download and you create the account. Uh, normally, most people create it with the same handle that they have on Twitter. You don't have to have Twitter to have Periscope. You can do this and use it as a standalone um, live streaming platform. But you get more bang for the buck if you also have a Twitter account. And if you have a Twitter account, then you should make your Periscope account the exact same handle would be my advice. You don't have to follow it, but that would be my advice. Um, and so you can choose to connect your Periscope through Twitter or not. You can activate your locations. There is this little icon here, the little TV set. If you click on that, it's gonna tell you who's currently Periscoping it's done in chronological order. Then you have a map and this will tell you who in the country, where are they? And so if you wanna see what's going on in France, you can click on France and see if anybody's periscoping from France and you can just pop in, just pop in. Um, then you, this would be your broadcast when you're ready to broadcast and you have things for your profile. Then over here, you can choose to have your periscope just disappear after 24 hours not archive it. 
you can decide to archive it. You can also decide to automatically go to your camera roll, particularly if you're shooting and you think you might want to use the footage for something else. A lot of times I will grab 15 seconds of something I've done and it's good enough for me to drop into maybe another video I'm doing overall. It's like, what is cooperative extension? Well, I've got all these live broadcasts I've done. I can pull little snippets from that. There's lots of things you could do with it. So that's an option. Just be aware that if you're saving it to your camera roll, it's going to take up a big video hunk. It's not going to be in HD, but it's still going to be a large file size. So if I save it to my camera roll, I try to move it off and get it into storage somewhere else and then it keeps my phone clear. You can, again, you can share it on Twitter or not. But if, and so if you are, you do want to use hashtags with Periscope and also with Twitter. So let's take another look here. And here's the screen that you'll see. You can go on to, you start the broadcast. It's telling you you're, you're going to be posting to Twitter as well as Periscope. You can click that and turn it off. So when it's white, it's activated and it lets you know. You can have your precise location sharing on or off. And by precise, they mean within a, within a range. That it's not going to tell you that you're at your house and what your address is. It's, it's going to be a very neighborhood type of range as far as your location. You can activate only people who follow you can chat. And this is something that you have to decide on. Um, I have had periscopes where I've had no trouble with trolls. I've had periscopes where I have. It, it is what it is. It's part of the, I'm not terribly skinned and I'm not, I get offended, but I don't get offended easily or I don't get outraged. If somebody says something, uh, for instance, I was in, in New Orleans for the very first time and I was scoping the, um, the, the French Quarter and one person asked me about the beads and, you know, let me see some beads and let me see how people are earning their beads. Well, if you know about the beads in New Orleans, you know what you have to do to get the beads. And that happens at night, happens during um, you know, spring break and that in Mardi Gras. Uh, and I just looked at him and I said, well, you're not going to see that from me, from me. And I kind of laughed it off. And I said, this is a G rated scope. I didn't block him and I didn't, he wasn't terrible, but it was suggestive, but I let it go. But I also got all these other great comments, people from Brazil, people from Russia, people from different states were going, oh my God, thank you for showing me that. That was my hometown and all oh, that was so neat. So there was this wonderful feedback that you get. And that's part of the beauty of this live streaming. So if you turn off the comments, people are going to be able to watch it, but they're not going to be able to engage with you. And, and advocacy, social media, gaining a, a presence is all about engagement. So you have to kind of figure out how you're going to handle the trolls or the com unwelcome comments. In Periscope, you just tap on it and you block them and you can also report them. So this is sort of what the screens look like here. Uh, when you're on Periscope. Facebook Live works very, very similarly, but it works through your, your program, your account, whether it's your personal account or your private account, business account. Facebook will notice that you're about to go live. It starts to let your friends or your fans know. In my experiences, this, there's not been a lot of people. Periscope will get you a larger global audience. Facebook still has to work on trying to get people to say, hey, Michelle's gone live, or Cooperative Extension has gone live, or you know, Canterbury Farms has gone live. Um, well, who are they going to tell? And so some of this has to be, you can archive it later and save it to your video album on Facebook. People can comment after the fact. And I have found that most of our viewers have come after the fact. It's easy enough to do. You open up your app, you go over to publish. And once you hit publish, you have these options and you want to click live video. You will then get this screen. It's going to show you a preview. It's whatever your camera's pointing at. Sometimes that freezes. You have to wait a few seconds. This is where you're going to describe your live video. Again, this is what you've pre-written in your notepad, hopefully. Um, you have to anticipate you're going to have an outage. You put in your description here, short, punchy. I'm not sure if there's a character limit. 
Uh, there is one on Twitter, but on Facebook, I'm not sure, but you don't want to write a paragraph. You just kind of want to say live, we're making honey in Delaware or live, watch us make ice cream or here's, here, here's the grapes, everything you wanted to know about a Holstein cow. Maybe you're at your dairy farm and you're going to talk about the breed and you're going to talk about, you're going to focus on an animal. You want to say that you may want to hashtag cow or you might want to hashtag dairy. That's up to you. You're going to have to experiment, but you put that in, you click go live and it gives you a three second countdown, three, two, one, and you're off and you're running. And again, it doesn't matter on Facebook how you hold your phone because it's going to, it's going to do square. You want to, so tips, bring that portable battery with you. On windy days, if you have an external microphone, use a dead cat. Um, I'm a cat fan. I didn't make up that name. That's what they call it. Make sure you pan the content slowly. This is my biggest mistake. Video is slower than the human eye, so you linger over your products or your points of interest and really pan slowly. I tend to kind of go, oh, look, I over here's this, and I go do this, and I do it like that, and it's when you see the end result, you're seeing it with your eyes. Your camera's not picking up what you think you saw. It, it goes, whoosh, and it doesn't, people are like, what was that? It's not a rewarding video experience. So slow your movement down. Don't ambush people. Don't walk up to them, and we'll show you an example of that. But don't put people on camera without asking them first. If I'm in a large setting where there's a lot of people, say like a, an open house for a garden center, you're, you're going to get people on camera. You'll see it when I went into the uh, New Orleans Lafayette Cemetery. There were people there. You can't help that. They're there. It's a public place, but I don't linger on them or focus on them. They did not ask to be on any kind of a broadcast. So it, it's very, very quick panning of people. I ask people off camera, I usually say, hi, I'm Michelle Walford. I'm, I'm broadcasting right now live on Facebook. Would you mind if I put you on camera? And they're either going to say yes or no. And you don't argue with them. Don't sit there and go, oh, come on. It's not the place to do it. If you haven't set that up ahead of time with somebody, take your chances. I ask them live. If they say no, then that's okay. I, I keep moving. Learn to say hello and thank you in a different language. It's nice because you're going to get people from all over the world will, will pop in, which is so, I think it's so cool. And you want, to, so you do, in my opinion, you want to engage with the audiences. You want the comments. Um, and again, they're less troublesome when they're on Facebook. I think because you can report somebody on Facebook, they're going to lose their account. Twitter, they, can, they just start another one up. So you just, you just have to kind of feel your way through that. If you are the host, consider having a partner. So if you plan on being the one that's being on camera, I really recommend you have a partner that can keep an eye on the comments and, and move the camera around a little bit. Be mindful of your signal quality. Decide if you want a regular schedule or not. Are you going to be every Friday at 3 o'clock? Are you going to do a, a five-minute update on? Or are you just going to do it when the spirit moves you? There's no right or wrong way here. And try to broadcast with a good signal. Even with good signal, it just goes out. Some content ideas. Okay, this, by the way, is just uh, an example of somebody who's letting people know ahead of time on his Facebook page, hey, I'm going to be live tonight ask me questions about my music. I'm going to be live tonight. So if you've got, you could even boost that post for $5 and say, we're going to be live tonight showing you how to start a beehive. We're going to be live tonight showing you what it's really like to milk a cow. Whatever it is that you want to, to share about your life, let on Facebook at least, let people know ahead of time, give them a heads up, something is going to be happening but what can you do you can do a guided tour little agri tours and hey this is my life you're a farmer you may think well what i do every day it's it's routine for me what's routine for you might be very very fascinating for somebody else as far as advocacy is concerned people think you know these are factory farms let them see the family let them see the person let them meet the people that are part of your op, your your farm life and your operation now, feature a work or feature an employee take them through and show them some aspect of your of your business you can do a qu question and answer interview with someone have 